So we just got into Roland Garros here, we just got our tickets from Gate X and so So I'm lucky enough to be here with Kazi, Mona Bartel's coach. She's got quite a tough match tomorrow against Anjali Kerber. Hi Kazi. Hey, nice to meet you guys. So what's it like coaching Mona Bartel? Um, yeah, first of all, I mean, it's great coaching here at this tournament. I mean, you saw it today, probably everything is a little bit bigger, a little bit more loud, a little bit more crazy. Um, so for me, it's I think my 15th in a row being here, 11 as a player, 4 as a coach. So I love being here and uh, yeah, working with Mona especially, I mean, it's great. Um, she's a good girl, she's working hard, she's trying her best every day and uh, now I try to prepare as good as possible for the match against uh, Anjali Kerber tomorrow. So you said you played here how many times? Um, I re didn't really count it, I was here since 2006 every year, so uh, how many did I say? 15, so probably actually if you counted it might be 13 only, but uh, yeah, I played doubles here all the time, uh, once made it to the mixed semi-finals, which was pretty nice. Um, but obviously, I mean, it's all about the Grand Slams, you know, it's just great to be here. Do you give Mona a lot of advice? Obviously, you played here quite a few times. Do you give her any <laughs> advice on, like, nerves and stuff? Um, I mean, it goes both ways. I mean, Mona is such a great player and she was already before I came in. So, uh, I try to learn as much from Mona as she's uh, probably learning from me. But, um, of course, if you come here, you speak a lot about the nerves, you speak a lot about situations who might occur or, like, uh, uh, what could happen and you go through all those scenarios and, uh, you try to prepare her as, uh, yeah, as good as possible. Is there any advice you'd give her, maybe if she's had like a tough defeat at a tournament, or maybe in the final first rounds? Um, yeah, I mean, that's like, uh, that's when the coach comes in most, you know, I mean, I'm not that kind of coach who comes in and says like, hey, why you didn't do this, or why you yeah. didn't do that? I mean, I obviously, I try to encourage her, her and uh, I, I try to give her an advice here or there, but the advice is always to be in an atmosphere where she feels comfortable to take it, you know, I'm not, the coach who criticizes all the time you know I mean as I said she's so good in so many things so you just try to do small things here and there and like uh, keeping her in a good spirit and lastly is there any advice you'd give to junior players trying to get onto the tour um, yeah work hard uh, try your best every day and the better advice maybe is for the parents of the junior players you know to encourage their kids and like as I said not criticizing too much and like uh, because uh, what I always say is like a happy person makes a better player and that's basically what I try to do. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, we got our tickets from Bidi Badu, so we got four ground passes from our family and we're just outside Philip Chatry Court here. But it's my first time here at Roland Garros so I just wanted to have a look around. Uh, so first of all I saw that there was a big camera plane in the sky. It's quite far away. This is there. And this basically looks like a plane with a camera on it, obviously to get aerial shots of uh, Philip Chatrier and courts like that. So I'm just going to have a look around and see where everything is because it's my first time here. Leave a comment down below if you've ever been to uh, Roland Garros. Um, here's, we're just, just there behind me is the area where the players leave and get picked up in cars, so cars there. So we're going now to the main area to see what's going on. Over here. So I think over there, that's the Roland Garros village uh, where all the players go and also pe important people basically. Here we've got a Peugeot uh, castle and it actually seems quite big especially Philip Chatrier court I think it seems very old as well because of the stone it's made out of so it's a bit different from Wimbledon centre court made out of metal and stuff and we're coming up to court 7 over there and hopefully we'll be able to watch some of those matches later and show you a bit of the footage of them playing so we're now on court five. Uh, Jury Vesely just finished, and this is my view of the court. Uh, so we're pretty close up, and I'm really looking forward to this match. I'm not exactly sure who's playing, but I'm really excited to watch it.
and obviously you have tons of food and news recording uh, studios just up here so I'll show you some of these now so I don't really know what I'm gonna eat here throughout the day I might get hungry I might buy something it's all quite expensive though so you know you never know really so, so here we have like crepes and like sweet stuff that you can buy trying to stay away from that eat healthily uh, we got Perrier stand here so there's all so all a lot of stuff going around obviously you've got interviews taking place like just here so there's kind of a lot going on we're coming up to the news stand uh, just up here sorry that I keep looking away there's just a lot of people here at the moment so here's the newsstand where a lot of the filming takes place for the Films News Studios, BBC, Eurosport, stuff like that. And there's just interviews going on everywhere, maybe challenges and stuff, like here. So up there is the main filming area. And along here there's just shops and food stalls really. There's the whole way down along there. And then on Suzon Longlen, we've got a film of or a live stream of the two courts. Uh, so you can always see what's going on up there. So I'm just going to walk over and show you a bit closer of what that looks like. And it's also quite interesting because obviously it's the first time here for me. A lot of players just walking about. So hopefully we could maybe get one or two pictures with one of them just walking past. Ask them for a quick picture because, you know, there's no special walkway for them. So obviously they're just the same as us. Queues seem quite long to courts, to be honest. Uh, here. Maybe 15, 20 minutes just to get into one court. So you have to pick which court we think is going to be the best. So in general, there are actually quite a lot of queues for everything. Here people are queuing for food after Philip Chatre uh, finished, or the play finished, and they're all just kind of refilling, getting some food. And the queue was really massive and there was, wasn't much space to walk through. However, here we were walking behind a player and we just walked straight through uh, all the way up to Suzanne Longland up there with the billboard. Um, and that was quite easy because obviously no one really wants to interrupt a player while they're walking. Um, and here we have the queue for the water. Obviously, this is at the same time Philip Chatrier has just finished. Everyone wants to refill their water. It took about 20 minutes for us to get some. Um, here's court number 16. Um, everyone is waiting here. It took about 20 minutes to get in. Uh, so it was actually quite a long wait time for a ground court. And the Ben and Jerry's queue, ice cream, obviously, food. And Lucian was queuing, there he is, Lucian was queuing for some ice cream. And in general, Roland Garros was all about queues. Orange juice, yes, that's another thing. I love orange juice. Um, I'm definitely going to go and get some of that later. <sighs> really excited about that. So, oh my goodness. I have Garcia Lopez up here against... Uh, Vavrinka on these two big screens and Garcia Lopez has just taken the first set 6-2 against Vavrenka but Vavrenka's 5-2 up in the second just up here so there's a lot of people just watching it from outside a bit like on TV so just up there I'm obviously just outside Suzanne Longlen so let's go back so while I was running around, Lucian carried on watching the match that I was watching earlier. So on the topic of players, the funny thing is, there are some players who just walk past, they have their little badges, their bags, and I just have no clue who they are, to be honest, so that's quite funny. I try and look at their badges and say hi sometimes, uh, if they're friendly, but sometimes be a bit embarrassing when someone's walking past, everyone's taking pictures of them, and let's say it's a women's player top 200 and you're not really sure who they are but they're obviously popular here because they're French so that's kind of funny sometimes
So we've just watched a couple games and we're having lunch now. We're watching something back up on the big screen. And now we're going to head to the other side of Roland Garros and watch some of the other matches and hopefully we'll show you what those matches are. So here me and Lucien were watching a match, Kasper Ruud against Jordan Thompson. Kasper Ruud did the qualifying and it was a really good first round match. Um, me and Lucien enjoyed seeing the players close up and seeing their emotions and also a few line calls um, that you wouldn't normally get to see on TV. In general really we found that the court for the players when we were this close, we were in the first row, it was harder for the players to obviously handle uh, their emotions because they can see all of the spectators and their faces and their emotions. Maybe if they miss a bad ball and someone's like, oh, they're going to feel down about that as well. And so that's the main thing me and Lucien kind of found about the smaller stadium. So guys, it's nearly 30 degrees out here. Hey. It's perfect weather for an ice cream. I've watched a couple of matches and now it's time to do some interviews. So this is Magdalena Fresh with me and she's got through qualification and is now playing Sloane Stevens. Let's get into the interview. So I heard you played the qualification, how, how was that? Yeah, it was so tough, three matches in a row, you know, day by day. Yeah, it's so tough to play here in the Grand Slam, it was my first time in Roland Garo. But I'm really happy I can go through and I can be in the main row and even second round. And is the level a lot different from qualification to obviously first round main draw? Uh, yeah, of course. There is a lot of great players in the main draw. It's top hundred, so so you know they are on the top. And the qualification, of course, it's also every match is so tough. And up against Sloane Stevens, is there any tactics you want to use to beat her? Yeah, she's playing so aggressive, so I know I will be in defense, but I need to also try to play my game. Yeah. Try to change something, the read maybe, and we will see. Yeah, because she won the US Open, didn't she? So she was playing really well. Yeah, she's a big player, you know? yeah. she's a winner of yeah, US yeah. Open, so it's a big name, but yeah. I hope I will do my best and I will fight. Yeah, and one last thing, is there any advice you'd give to junior players trying to get into qualification and main draw? Yeah, you need to just fight for every ball and you'll get your dreams. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to do a serve kind of speed test game, uh, two euros to enter, so you get three tries. Me and Lucia are going to try and see how fast we can work. I thought it was a hundred watts. So thank you for watching our vlog, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if there's anything we missed that we didn't mention or we didn't see in Roland Garros, uh, then leave a comment down below. And also, have you been here? Have you watched the tennis here on the clay? Leave a comment down below as well. But we hope you enjoyed this video and remember to like and subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when the next video comes out or when we do the next live stream. So, see you in the next video. Bye.